Hi there, I'm the Mythkeeper. Welcome back to my channel. We're continuing my series on the planar cosmology of Pathfinder. And this time, this is my second video on the outer sphere. We're talking about the evil planes and the chaotic planes this time. So we're talking about the abyss, Abaddon, hell, and the maelstrom. This is going to be some fun content. Enjoy. The maelstrom. The maelstrom is where souls that Phrasma judges to be chaotic neutral are sent after judgment. The outer planes are all surrounded by the maelstrom a vast, volatile, roiling thing that churns at the heart of reality. Conventional wisdom holds that the maelstrom is the source of all reality, that portions of its liquid quintessence coalesced into the outer planes, and that it now erodes reality and recycles this quintessence back into the positive energy plane. Doomsayers and pessimists suggest that this process isn't entirely efficient, and that each time a bit of potentiality is lost, so that, in time, the ravenous grinding will consume all of reality. The maelstrom serves as a planar crossroads, for its shores eventually touch all of the outer planes. The plane itself has numerous native occupants, including living manifestations of entropy like chaos beasts, risen champions of battle like the Einherjar and Valkyries, and the most famous of its denizens, the primeval and serpentine proteans. Yet, visitors are just as likely to encounter something foreign to the plane, for the maelstrom is rife with wandering monsters and travelers from other realms, self-exiled fallen celestials and risen fiends, things lost and abandoned, demons spilling forth from great abyssal rifts, and armies of gods marching to war. The maelstrom's most common denizens include the Einharjar and Valkyries, Einherjar congregate in the maelstrom as much for its chaos as they do for the opportunity for conflict that it provides. Manifestations of fallen champions who perished in righteous religious wars, they either fight on their own or serve various gods and pantheons throughout the maelstrom's worlds. Each Einherjar is selected for its role in the afterlife by Valkyries, who are themselves formed from petitioners risen from the souls of the greatest of soldiers. Both types of outsiders are often found in the Cerulean Void, aboard ships or island realms, or wherever the call of battle and conflict rages. Proteans. The serpentine proteans are living extensions of the maelstrom that act both subtly and overtly against incursions of other alignments. Proteans organize loosely into groups known as choruses, each with a philosophical obsession set by its Kelatar priest kings, although chorus allegiance is wildly transient and their goals are often fluid. The choruses routinely assault the other plane's borders en masse, acting almost like the manifestation of an immune system against an infection of unwanted ethics and philosophies. When at rest, proteans prefer to dwell in the deepest reaches of the cerulean void itself. The Shapeless The Maelstrom's petitioners appear as they did in life, but incorporeal and constantly shifting in shape and color, like the sheen of oil on water reflecting an image. Most of them wander, indulging their whimsy in the Maelstrom's wilds, often aided by protean choruses. Unlike many petitioners who go unclaimed by a deity, the Shapeless are never conscripted or transformed unless they specifically petition one of the choruses. The Proteans themselves predate the emergence of mortal souls, and while they can and do accept willing souls to join their ranks, the process is less common than on other planes. As a result, it is relatively rare for one of the Shapeless to ascend into a Protean. Most who are not chosen by Valkyries for ascension into Einherjar are destined to become Chaos Beasts instead. Like the other outer planes, the maelstrom is home to numerous divinities, the most prominent and mysterious of which is the Protean's gestalt divinity, the Speakers of the Depths. And the entirety of the plane could be considered an extension of that collective entity. Some planar scholars consider the Speakers to be a manifestation of the maelstrom as a living entity, albeit a profoundly alien one. Other divinities include ascended Protean demigods, commonly called the Protean lords, as well as some of Pathfinder's main divinities, including Besmara, Hanspur, Naderi, Nethys, Sivana, the Yanjira trinity, who are commonly worshipped in Tianxia, including Heifen, Nalinavati, and Yamatsumi, as well as the entire orc pantheon. The maelstrom spans two regions. The borderlands form something of a broken ring around the plane's perimeter, while the cerulean void churns at its heart. Although the Cerulean Void behaves as an immense ocean of water, it is in fact composed of liquid quintessence that can form or dissolve into solid or gaseous forms with little warning. Important locations in the maelstrom include Akanefti. Nethys's divine realm of Akanefti consists of a massive slab of stone the size of a planet jutting up from the Cerulean Void, capped with a bowl-like mesa containing an immense desert. 
The edges of this mesa host thousands of wizard's towers, while Nethys' own abode stands at the center of the desert itself, an edifice from which he, as the all-seeing eye, can watch everything that unfolds in the land. While the realm itself is stable, the atmosphere in the region surrounding it shifts constantly between magical hurricanes and strange calms, making approaches to the realm unpredictable and dangerous, or utterly dull depending entirely on chance. Basra Kal. Amid the churning chaos of the maelstrom lies one of the plain's largest settlements. The city of Basra Kal is home to a unique set of outsiders, those that broke from the shackles of their typical alignment and their associated moral constraints. Although the city is home to numerous clashing ideologies, the mix of outsiders work together to defend their city from both the constant erosion of the maelstrom and the threat of the eons who seek to return those deviations from the universal constant to their proper alignment. Galisemni. Galisemni, the city of the celestial and the damned, exists as a great shining jewel of stability, safety, and interplanar commerce within the maelstrom. Galisemni meanders throughout the borderlands, a stable island dragged along by the maelstrom's tides and currents. Galisemni draws from a cross-section of the plains, ending up with a wildly diverse population in blood, origin, and thought. The city's civic structure operates on a fractious local scale, with prominent individuals or groups exerting influence to ensure safety and basic infrastructure. The city consists of two major districts, an outer and an inner ring, intentionally evoking the concept of the great beyond's outer and inner spheres. Of the two, the outer ring is more affected by the maelstrom's chaos. Beyond homes and tenements, the outer ring contains the city's numerous planar portals, as well as a myriad of markets, racial ghettos, and the so-called mad district, an unregulated combination of art colony, drug den, and festival. The city's inner ring is less densely populated and less prone to spontaneous terrain changes or civil upheaval relatively speaking. Most of Galisemni's long-term citizens, educated tradesmen, and the city's wealthy elite dwell here. The city's skyline features seven towering statues of Keketar Proteans, known collectively as the Watching Seven. The Proteans themselves avoid the statues of the Watching Seven, but those who open their minds to the statues while standing in their churning shadows claim that the symbols upon them sing to them. Some speculate the statues are all that remain of a chorus of proteans who forged the first burning door between the maelstrom and the abyss, forever altering reality's structure. An equally mysterious element of Galisemni is the Leith Wall. This wall of black stone slithers across the city, although it does not itself live. Its sides are inscribed with thousands of names that no readers recognize or remember. Citizens treat the Leith Wall as cursed ground and avoid it. When the Leith Wall crawls into a neighborhood, its inhabitants abandon their homes and businesses until the wall moves on. The Palace of Love Eternal Nadere's divine realm is a place of gardens and groves that hosts forever young couples who stroll eternally along flowery paths or pursue dalliances in ornate gazebos. Yet for all the palace's idyllic beauty, it is suffused with a sense of restless dissatisfaction, and those who linger over long become increasingly haunted by a feeling of something left behind and forgotten. The Sea Wraith The pirate goddess Besmara sails the Cerulean Void on her ship Sea Wraith, routinely raiding the shores of the Outer Plains before vanishing back into the Maelstrom. She has no true domain, as befits a pirate, and treats the decks of her ship as her divine realm, a function that allows her to adjust the ship's size and layout as she wills. Volkorgoth. Ruled by the Orc Pantheon, this drifting continent acts as a self-contained world with its own ecology, gravity, and weather. Each Orc demigod claims an independent shifting territory in Volkorgoth, a realm populated by Orc petitioners, allied outsider servants, violent monsters, and the occasional mortal. A great valley with a blood-red river coursing through its center serves as neutral ground and a place of trade for not only the realm's inhabitants, but also for Einhar Yar mercenaries, proteans, and adventurers. Yanjira. The island world of Yanjira is a tripartite divine realm. Nalinivati controls the island's tropical jungle-cloaked lower reaches, Yamatsumi its immense central volcano, and Heifeng the storms and seas that surround it. Hell. Hell is where the souls that Phrasma judges to be lawful evil are sent after judgment. Hell is not the oldest plane of the great beyond, yet it well may be its most notorious. For here Asmodeus and his legion of devils have worked since the dawn of mortality to tempt, corrupt, and lure those who have the gift, or curse of free will, into eternal damnation. Like heaven, hell is divided into various layers. Hell's nine layers and their ruling archdevils are as follows. Avernus. Avernus, the gateway to hell, is ruled by Barbatos, the archdevil of animals, corruption, and gateways. Dis. The infernal city of Dis is the largest city in hell. 
It is ruled by Despater, the archdevil of cities, prisons, and rulership. Erebus. Erebus is ruled by Mammon, the archdevil of avarice, watchfulness, and wealth. These lightless vaults serve as hell's treasury. Phlegathon. The burning reaches of Phlegathon contain immense mines and endless toil, and they are ruled by Belial, the archdevil of adultery, deception, and desire. Stygia. Flooded and festering Stygia is a poisonous realm ruled by Geryon, the archdevil of forbidden knowledge, heresy, and snakes. Malibulge. The grimly beautiful ash-caked landscape of Malibulge is ruled by Moloch, the general of hell and the archdevil of fire, obedience, and war. Cocytus. The seventh layer of hell is a perpetually frozen landscape where nothing is as it seems. It is ruled by Balzabul, the archdevil of arrogance and lies. Cana. Called the bones of hell, Cana is a realm of immense spikes and chains amid a dark and dismal gulf, ruled by Mephistopheles, the archdevil of contracts, devils, and secrets. Nessus, the deepest layer of hell, is the sole domain of Asmodeus, the prince of darkness. Hell's denizens include Azuras. The hellish denizens known as Azuras are the result of divine accidents, hateful reminders that even divinities are fallible. Unlike most outsider races, Azuras exist in a cycle of reincarnation, wherein a slain Azura returns in a lesser form, rather than simply ceasing to exist. On rare occasion, when a slain Azura has excelled in its role, it instead comes back in a more powerful form. Devils. The most numerous of Hell's inhabitants are devils, beings of absolute order and obedience who know nothing of compassion, free will, or morality. Functioning in a rigid caste system and always striving to excel in their roles for a chance at promotion, devils seek to influence mortals into consigning their souls to eternal damnation in the afterlife, for it is upon the backs of the damned that Hell runs. The Damned. The petitioners of Hell are known as the Damned, and they are legion. The Damned manifest in Hell in forms that evoke those they held in life, yet in a starved, colorless state. It is rare to encounter the Damned, outside of some form of eternal torment, but now and then devils have been known to take them in, almost like pets. Whether or not the torments these pets receive at their master's hands are less than what they would have been otherwise is open to debate. Whatever their position, the damned all bear the scars of their abuses as they are torturously molded for all eternity into the building blocks of hell itself. Like the other outer planes, hell is home to numerous divinities, and this includes both divinely ascended Azuras and devils, known as Asura Ranas and Arc Devils respectively, as well as some of the main divinities of Pathfinder, including the dragon god Dahak, the cryptic demigoddess Erakura, the giant gods Minderhal and Zurzvater, and of course, the lord of hell, Asmodeus himself. Important locations in Hell include Atalu. The devils of Hell dismissively refer to Atalu as the shallow rifts, associating the diverse realms with the abyss in response to what to devilkind seems almost a chaotic jumble of disparate realms. But to the Asura Ranas, a twisted order binds the realms of Atalu together. Left largely to their own devices within Atalu, the Asura Ranas focus their wrath on countless material plane worlds in their constant pursuit of divine destruction. The city of Dis. Dis is one of the largest planar metropolises in the Great Beyond, rivaled only by Axis and matched by none of that plane's individual districts. Dis is divided into four regions. The Outlands, a bleak and blasted stretch of landscape. The Ghettos, sprawling suburbs inhabited by the privileged evil of the pit. The Ophidian Maze, the largest of the regions, consisting of the bulk of the city's civil infrastructure. And the Iron Heart, the private realm of the layer's ruler, Dispater. Hirfelheim. After he was exiled from Jotungard, Zurzvater wandered the great beyond in the throes of fury for an age. The god of fire giants eventually came to hell and was enamored by Malibulger's volcanic reaches. For another rage after, Zurzvater and his armies clashed with those of Moloch, much to Asmodeus' amusement, until finally the Prince of Darkness stepped in to offer Zurzvater rule over an underground volcanic realm on the edge of Malibulge itself, a place thereafter known as Hirfelheim. In part, Asmodeus did this to vex Moloch, punishing the Archdevil of War for not being able to casually and easily turn aside Zerzvater's forces, but also to gain Zerzvater's grudging thanks. Stone Peak Minderhal's divine realm is known as Stone Peak, a towering chain of volcanic mountains that runs along the border of Hell's uppermost layer of Avernus and the wastelands of Axis. Though technically a part of Hell, Stone Peak remains under the complete and total rule of Minderhall, and devils are not welcome upon its jagged slopes. Abaddon. Abaddon is where souls that Phrasma judges to be neutral evil are sent after judgment. 
Abaddon embodies the concept of oblivion of the mortal soul. Here, the four horsemen and their courts of harbingers rule over a population of demons, epitomizing every iteration of mortal death. The bleak and forbidding wastes are laced through by the glittering toxic ribbon of black water known as the River Styx, while overhead the sky hangs in perpetual eclipse, a single shrouded star looking down like the lidded eye of a slumbering malevolent god. Among the most feared of all the demigods are those four known as the Horsemen of the Apocalypse, the greatest of all the demons and the rulers of much of Abaddon itself. These are, of course, the Horsemen of Death, Famine, Pestilence, and War. Abaddon's denizens include Demons. This is demon spelled with an A before the E, and it is a distinct creature type from demon spelled with only an E. The former demon type, being native to Abaddon and being of neutral evil alignment, and the latter demon type being native to the Abyss and being chaotic evil in alignment. Abaddon demons are condemned monsters, their forms shifted to reflect their nature in life and their cause of death. Demons have a ravenous, overwhelming desire to sate themselves on mortal souls, like addicts seeking to feed their own selfish needs. There are also religious zealots, devoted to the obliteration of every mortal soul, pitiable, wretched things, rudderless and adrift, in an uncaring cosmos, and forever defined by the very thing they detest, life itself. Divs. Corrupted genies exiled to Abaddon, divs are consumed by an utter hatred of mortals, and seek to bring ruin to those creatures' creations. Serving the demigod Araman, they dwell in the unclaimed wastes at Abaddon's periphery, where they war with exiled demon harbingers and endlessly plot to rain catastrophe upon the material plane. Night Hags The Night Hags' interplanar trade in stolen souls make them a ubiquitous sight in Abaddon's soul markets. Beneficiaries of some cosmic bargain between their goddess Alazra and the Four Horsemen, Night Hags receive virtual immunity to predation in any form while within Abaddon, and are afforded free movement between the domains of the Harbingers and the Horsemen. The Hunted Abaddon's petitioners appear much as they did in life, though greatly emaciated, populating the horrific landscapes as the lowest tier of the metaphysical food chain. Many perish within hours of arrival, and those who survive long enough rarely know a moment of peace from being hunted. Their often brief and horrific afterlives usually end with ritual consumption or industrialized oblivion, with the surviving few preying upon each other, fueling ironic transformations into demons who then go on to perpetuate the cycle. Like the other outer planes, Abaddon is home to numerous divinities, and this includes divinely ascended demons known as demon harbingers, as well as some of the main divinities of Pathfinder, including Araman, Lao Shu Po, Ergothoa, Ziphus, and of course, the Four Horsemen themselves. Important locations in Abaddon include Blood Rot. Situated on the shores of the Sea of Lamentation, Ergothoa's divine realm manifests as one would expect from the vampiric goddess of undeath, as a vast necropolis sprawling around a fang-like tower. Within the mist-shrouded streets of her realm, undead rule and engage in the excesses they pursued in life. Outsiders sometimes visit Blood Rot, but they are not the norm. That blood rot is occupied by those who have escaped the cycle of souls makes it an unusual locale. For those who dwell here, remember their mortal lives clearly and vividly, and at times travel back to their one-time homeworlds to feed, spread terror, and otherwise do their goddess's will. The Cinder Furnace Of the four domains ruled by the horsemen, the Cinder Furnace is the most sterile. The domain of Zuriel, the horsemen of war, the cinder furnace clings to the slopes of a dormant volcano, its forges constantly churning out weapons of destruction and engines of extermination. These forges have long since bled the volcano's energy dry, and today they use souls as an alternate source of energy. The smoldering haze that drifts from the caldera above is not smoke and ash, but the ruined remnants of the souls used to power the forges below. The Drowning Court the river Styx bubbles up like blood from Abaddon's polluted soil, winding across the blighted plain. It presents a toxic, mind-leeching hazard, but also serves as a route of travel within Abaddon and far beyond. The most prominent location along the river Styx is Charon, the horseman of death's domain, the drowning court. This palace lies below the Styx's black waters, marked on the surface by a city of boats and artificial islands linked together by chains of moldering ropes. This realm is mobile, meandering along the currents of the Styx into bodies of water like the Sea of Lamentation, or drifting up against the desolate shorelines to remain docked for days or weeks at a time, all subject to Charon's whims. Plaguemere. 
Apollyon, the horseman of pestilence's domain, is a realm of festering swamps, flooded forests, and shallow acidic oceans. The heart of his domain is the throne of flies, a towering edifice carved from an ancient corpse. The border between Plaguemere and the Sea of Lamentation is hazy, but generally defined by the point where the threat of acidic dissolution becomes greater than that of infestation or disease. The Withered Court the Withered Court is a realm of biological and metaphysical horrors, a vast wound in Abaddon's landscape that lays bare the awful workings within. Towers of flesh and bone are slowly extruded from the depths, with shrieking souls used as mortar to keep the court's impossible buildings upright. This nauseating reach is the domain of the horseman of famine, Trelmerixian, and within his weeping tower he continues his nihilistic work, while the surrounding Withered Court bleeds like a living thing, slowly expanding its rotting borders through the plain. The slave city of awaiting consumption. This sprawling metropolis is one of the few points of relative safety on Abaddon. Yet, even as it welcomes merchants, emissaries, and explorers, the slave city of awaiting consumption makes no attempt to hide its true nature. The bulk of the city's populace are little more than captive livestock, mortals hand-picked for their bloodlines, failures, transgressions, and spiritual blemishes, to ensure that their souls, when they are inevitably consumed, are as delicious and delectable as possible. Until that point, these mortals serve as slaves, training in specialized skills, or fighting for the amusement of their fiendish owners. The Abyss The Abyss is where the souls that Phrasma judges to be chaotic evil are sent after judgment. The Abyss is one of the largest of the Outer Plains, but it consists of numerous distinct ecosystems rather than a single roiling expanse. Each portion of the Abyss exists as a demiplane in its own right. The Abyssal reaches ruled by divinities are known collectively as the Abyssal Realms. The Abyss's denizens include demons. Although demons are perhaps the youngest of the established races of Outsider, they are also the most numerous. The first demons were created eons ago by a now forgotten experiment on the nature of mortal souls that had become larvae in the afterlife. In conjoining these sinful mortal petitioners with a clip-off, this triggered a most unholy transformation, the creation of the first demon. In the aftermath of this experiment, the denizens of the Abyss learned how to easily transform mortal sin into demonic life. A chain reaction spread from this incident, giving rise to demons throughout the Abyss and single-handedly shifting power over the plain from the Klipoths to the demons. After this initial population explosion, the demonic population of the Abyss leveled out, but it remains unimaginably large. Klipoths, once the rulers of the Abyss, Clipoths are now an endangered species. Driven back to the very depths of the plain by the explosive growth of demonic life, the Clipoths hope to one day reclaim the plain from the demons. Titans. The Titans of the Abyss are universally bitter, cruel, and jealous of the gods. Once hoping to be counted among the divine, they were summarily defeated by true gods and cast into the Abyss as punishment. Larva. Moral souls consigned to the Abyss transform into hideous maggot-like petitioners known as larva. These writhing abominations can manifest anywhere in the Abyss, but they are most common in its uppermost reaches. Like the other Outer Plains, the Abyss is home to numerous divinities, and this includes both divinely ascended demons and clipoths, known as demon lords and clipoth lords respectively, as well as some of the main divinities of Pathfinder, including the evil dwarf god Droskar, Glounder, Girona, Lamashtu, and Nocticula. The four ascended Barghest hero gods of the goblin race can also be found in the Abyss. Important locations in Abaddon include Alushinira. The sprawling metropolis of Alushinira lies at the heart of the Midnight Isles, serving as a capital city for what was once, and may still be, Nocticula's realm. The demon lord of assassins and lust has recently vanished from her palace, the House of Silken Shadows, leaving rule of the city in the more than capable hands of a nascent demon lord named Shamira. The loss of its leader has done little to affect Alushinira directly, for Nocticula had never held a particularly visible role in the region anyway, but the potential for full-on anarchy to erupt and spread through the city has never been greater. The Ashen Forge. The realm of the Ashen Forge is the domain of Droskar, the exiled dwarven god of toil. Ashen Forge is a distorted collection of mine shafts and forges that are consumed and destroyed by the Abyss as quickly as Droskar and his slaves can craft them. Basalfaced. This unusual layer of the Abyss was originally part of Hell. Lamashtu struck a deal with the four demigods known as the Goblin Hero Gods and siphoned their home into the Abyss and placed it next to her own realm of Kurnugia. Each of the four Goblin demigods, Hadragesh, Venkalvor, Zarangel, and Zogmugot, has their own region here. Bazul Zeal. 
This abyssal realm is a swampy quagmire nestled in a world-sized valley on the edge of Lamashti's domain. Among the brackish backwaters, the god of stagnation Glounder rules all, treating the realm as his personal hunting ground, whether his prey consists of visitors from material plane worlds or natives of the abyss. Kurnugia. The sprawling domain of Kurnugia is the realm of Lamashtu. As the uppermost realm of the abyss, it is also among the largest and easiest for travelers to reach. The region is centered around a central mesa of immense height, atop which Kurnugia's capital city of Yanaron perches. Mura Velera. Girona rules a twisted forest realm called Mura Velera, a lightless reach on the opposite side of Kurnugia from Glander's realm of Zulzil. The Hag Queen herself is rarely in residence in this place of perpetual night, as she prefers to wander the material plane, leaving the day-to-day -day rule of the woodland to her many daughters. Thank you so much for watching! That pretty much completes uh, our series on the planar cosmology. I do have another video coming on the demi-planes that might be out in a little bit. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.